Hello and welcome to this new video in the ClearPass workshop series. My name is Herman and in this series I will build a ClearPass deployment from scratch and integrate with wired wireless and Active Directory and much more. So in the last video we ended up with our Windows client which was connected to the network. Um, so let me show you the Windows client so you can see it is connected and here in ClearPass we can see the authentication is doing an machine authentication in uh, the uh, instant AP we can see that we have two clients connected now so um, here is my Windows client and uh, this is an iOS device uh, which is connected as user 1. So in this video we will be implementing role based access and role based access is a feature that is in uh, the Aruba infrastructures what we can do is we can create roles and um, at this moment all clients uh, fall in the role uh, corp1 uh, which allows traffic to all destinations uh, what we will be building is uh, another sit situation where we can for example uh, allow traffic for employees but with bring your own devices uh, we can deny access to intranet uh, services and the same uh, we can do for contractors so to these roles we can uh, attach firewall roles and uh, now the next step is how can we make ClearPass return the proper roles for the proper users. So let's have a look at the ClearPass. So how is my service defined at this moment? So this is still the same service as we built in the last edition. Uh, what we can see is that we are authenticating against Active Directory and we skip this role mapping and uh, for the enforcement we did an allow all. What we will need to do is create the proper role mapping and proper enforcement policy so we can return the right roles uh, to the instant AP for the right users. So first step what we are going to do is we are uh, creating roles in ClearPass and Roles in ClearPass, uh, you should consider them just as tags or labels. So if I create a uh, role WS test, uh, you can see it's just uh, a name and a description. Then we have here role mappings. And what we can do in role mappings is generic in ClearPass. So we can reuse this in many uh, different services. We can do uh, mapping. So what you can see here is that we are mapping in this role mapping uh, we are checking the active directory for group membership and if a user is member of the workshop admins group we will uh, assign the label or clearpass role ws admin or uh, ws uh, help desk for help desk users so how can we apply that uh, role mapping uh, we can apply that here in the roles section so in the service we can select here role mapping and um, so let's see what that, that that does so now first uh, we go to in, into our client and we are changing the uh, the network so to do that we can right click here on the networking symbol open network and sharing center then we can click here on the wi-fi corp one and uh, here under the wires properties this is where we can find the security settings this has a bit changed in windows 10 um, and to be honest i had to look uh, quite a bit to find the ways and the locations uh, to change this um, but uh, this is the way how you can get to these uh, security settings after you connect it they try to make it easy um, but if you know what to find um, it's pretty difficult now to find it so first we go here into the uh, protected EAP settings and here uh, in the authentication method we are disabling now the uh, Windows uh, logon name so and what we can do here under the advanced settings is we can uh, switch from computer authentication only to uh, user or computer authentication and if we do that now when the client is reconnecting um, it should ask me for the credentials so it does here what I can do now is I can put in admin one as the username and my password 
Okay, let's see. So we are connected now to the network. Let's check in the access tracker what happened. So what we see now is that the admin one user is connected to the network. And uh, what we do see here is that in the roles, it did uh, assign the WS admin. And here under the input, under the authorization attributes, we can see here the groups. And indeed, this user is in the workgroup admins uh, um, uh, uh, group on Active Directory. What we do see is that um, although we have the role WS admin, uh, we still send back the allow access profile, which means here on the instant AP, if we check here, you can see we have the role, the default role for the SID Corp 1. So we need to do something more. We need to uh, set up the enforcement uh, profiles and policies. So let's go there. Here under the enforcement, First thing we have here is the policies. And what we can see is that I already prepared some policies. So I prepared uh, roles and I uh, returned I prepared some VLAN return attributes. And yeah, let's pick this one for the admin. What you can see here is that it will return the radius attribute Aruba user role equals admin. And what the instant AP will do when it receives this uh, attribute, it will assign the role admin. So. Again, the role that has been defined here and the roles admin. So that will allow access to all destinations. And if you want to create new enforcement profiles, just go here to add and uh, put in uh, a name. And here under the attributes, it will um, yeah put a placeholder already so you can uh, put in the test. Uh, role here or if you want to uh, return a VLAN attribute you can uh, check here uh, the VLAN and you can here return the VLAN ID uh, for that and you can return of course multiple attributes um, as well so when we have the profiles defined we start building a uh, enforcement policy so the enforcement policy here again this looks Pretty similar like the role mapping, but what we do here is uh, we take the role that we assigned from the role mapping. So you saw that the admin user got the WS admin uh, role in ClearPass. So the label in ClearPass, what we then do is we return the radius attribute, the role admin. So that will send back that attribute, radius attribute, and set the uh, access on the instant AP to the admin role. Same we do for contractors. We put that uh, in a contractor role and we can, um, as you can see, also return a VLAN. So the client will get in another VLAN as well based on the authentication. Uh, the three other roles, uh, uh, roles here are if we have an employee on a machine authenticated device. So that is um, on a Windows device that has authenticated to the network, we will return the corporate VLAN and an employee role. Um, when the device is not a domain machine, we return a BYAD role and we put the client in the guest network. And uh, finally, if we have not authenticated, but just uh, have the client uh, sitting at the logon prompt, we will uh, have the machine authenticated, but uh, not an employee. We will return uh, the VLAN 11 so the client can access the Active Directory and, and so on. So now we need to assign this uh, enforcement policy in the service. So we go here to the enforcement. What you can see here now is that in the drop down list, we can uh, select our enforcement policy. Let's save that and uh, let's see what happens if we re-authenticate the client. So let's get back to our client. Let's disconnect. from the corporate SSID and let's connect again. So it should be prompting me for my credentials. Oh, I think it remembered my credentials. So let's see here in the monitoring in the access tracker. So what we now see here is that the admin one has um, 
been sent back with the admin role to the instant AP. And here in the uh, access tracker in the output, we can see indeed um, that it has the admin uh, role sent back. So let's see if that worked. So here is my client admin one. So what we can see here is that the role is, uh, is indeed admin. Um, so uh, that worked. Um, it looks like the IP address is still wrong. Uh, probably that's uh, just some delay. And if we create some traffic, that should be updated as well. So that will update um, later on. So what, um, what we will do now is uh, let's see if we can connect uh, as a contractor. So with different uh, credentials. So we go back here to the wireless properties. Um, we untick here to remember that was why I re when I reconnected, um, it did, uh, didn't ask me again to uh, sign on to the network. So let's connect to the network. So sometimes this works. So now let's log in as contractor. So that seems to have worked. Now let's see here in uh, the access tracker, we see the contractor has uh, logged in and what we can see is that indeed the contractor role and uh, the VLAN 14 has been uh, returned. So let's see here. Um, what we can see is that the role is indeed contractor. So it looks like that worked for me. And um, one of the policies that we had for the contractor is that the contractor should not be able to access the internet. So uh, let's see if we are refreshing the page, you can see, uh, yeah, it keeps spinning here. And uh, we're not able to access uh, the internet uh, while if we try to go to uh, hp.com, you can see that we can access uh, the HPE website. So this is what we wanted. Contractors cannot access internal resources while uh, they can access the internet. So now let's see what happens with my iPad. So I have my uh, user one here, which is still in the corporate SSID. So let me disconnect uh, this user from uh, the instant AP and uh, it should reconnect. So let me reconnect to the client. So it's uh, now re-authenticating to the network. So what we can see here now is that we have uh, user one with the BYOD uh, profile. So you can see um, as it's following uh, the rules uh, where we defined that uh, users on non-corporate devices will get a BYOD role. We can see that indeed it has um, done that. So um, that about uh, role-based access. And if I um, would have connected my Windows machine, um, it would be in the employee role. So let me show back you the service. So what we did today was um, we changed the authentication. Um, so uh, still authenticating against the Active Directory, but what we did is we added role mapping for ClearPass. And again, these roles are just labels. So if you're in this group on AD um, or in this group on AD, you will be assigned this uh, role or label. And then in the last step of the service, what we did is we checked for the roles and we put in the uh, enforcement profiles, which returned the correct VLAN information and the correct role information to the instant AP. So to summarize it, um, because it might be a bit confusing, we uh, use roles and uh, we use them in two contexts. Uh, context, uh, so we use them uh, as clear pass roles, which are just tags, uh, labels. And uh, what you just saw is they can be used during the enforcement phase. And in the enforcement phase, we can return Aruba instant roles, which are um, yeah tags that will be sent to the instant AP and on the instant AP or on the controller, 
they have firewall rules uh, attached to that. And the firewall rules um, uh, can define what traffic is allowed, what traffic is not allowed. Um, but it also can allow application traffic. It can configure captive portals, quality of service, um, and a lot more. And yeah, we might be using those features in uh, later sessions of this uh, videos. So in the next video, um, we will be switching the client to uh, TLS authentication. So we have set up our uh, Windows Active Directory to uh, push client certificates to the devices and users in our network. And we are switching away from username and password authentication to client certificate authentication or eTLS. So if you like this video, please let it know below this video. Also put your comments there if you have any questions. Um, we appreciate them. Uh, and also subscribe to the channel because if you subscribe to the channel, when that next video comes out, you will be alerted and you can uh, view it as one of the first uh, in this uh, uh, on this channel. So thank you very much for watching and uh, see you later.